It's March 21st, and on this episode of the Crypto Coin Show, Smart Contracts Part 2. If you missed Smart Contracts Part 1, it's in the description box below. And in this overview, a little bit deeper into smart contracts with a look at how the blockchain affects how smart contracts work and the benefits and the limitations of smart contracts on the blockchain and why specific blockchains can make or break your contract. I'm Ashton Addison from eventchain.io and this is the Crypto Coin Show, where I decrypt the facts to keep you on track in the crypto world. So hopefully by now you have a basic idea of smart contracts, or at least you've heard that it's a buzzword right now and are eager to learn more. To sum up the basic definition, smart contracts are essentially just contracts, but with better technology and more appropriately serving the growing business needs of international companies. But for now, let's focus on the blockchain, where a smart contract code is executed and the place where the actual code resides as it sits there indefinitely. What really is the difference between hosting a contract in some legal file on a lawyer's shelf, hosting it on a centralized server at their office, or hosting it on the blockchain? First thing you need to understand is that how smart contracts work so well on the blockchain is because they allow you to integrate a payment system that can interact directly with the contract. And those payment systems are built into the Ethereum blockchain. The ability to interact using a payment system anywhere around the world is critical to the usefulness of smart contracts in international business. For this reason alone, smart contracts are more efficient when executed on a blockchain rather than on a centralized file server. For the purpose of simplicity, I'm going to focus on smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, but later I will discuss how different blockchains can also be used. So past the financial interoperability of the contract, also lies the security aspect. Which is more secure, hosting the file on a server or on the blockchain? While hosting a contract digitally on a centralized server is more efficient than having a paper copy because it can be distributed easily to parties across the world, there are still vulnerabilities in storing contracts on a centralized server. Centralized servers have single points of failure that attackers could point their attacks to. Whereas blockchains do not have a single point of failure, as a copy of the contract would be distributed across all of the nodes verifying within the Ethereum network. It is a bit complex, but essentially the fact that Ethereum has a payment network integrated into the blockchain and miners validating transactions occurring on the chain, it is designed in such a way that it is very hard to hack the system and send a fake transaction to a smart contract impersonating one of the parties privy to the original contract. Essentially, unless you own 51% of the mining power for Ethereum, any attempt to fake the system will result in the attackers losing much more resources than they have to gain. And the more nodes verifying on the blockchain, the harder it becomes to penetrate and Ethereum currently has the most nodes validating it than any other blockchain. As well, the amount of transactions per day has gone up 10 times each year in Ethereum since inception, from around 5,000 per day to 50,000, and then 500,000 by the end of 2018. Not only does blockchain have more security, but it, it can be accessed regardless of your location around the world, unlike a centralized server. Although it seems weird it can be accessed easily around the world, any sensitive information in the contract will be encrypted information, so it could not be read without the proper security permissions. Now, most smart contracts are generally hosted on the Ethereum blockchain, but other blockchains are also implementing the ability to create and execute smart contracts, like NEO, Stellar, EOS, Archain, and Cardano, and there are also projects working to bring smart contracts on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, like Counterparty and Rootstock, to give Bitcoin more functionality. Hosting smart contracts on, the, on these other blockchains will have different levels of security, interoperability, programmability, scalability, and functionality. Expect to see a lot more platforms coming out that can also host smart contracts, but it may be hard for any of them to be adopted into the mainstream because to become popular, they will need to grow faster than Ethereum, which is growing tenfold each year. In my future videos, I'll dive deeper into smart contracts on different blockchains. There's also the case of running smart contracts on a private blockchain versus a public blockchain. Now, 
what is the difference between private blockchains and public blockchains? Private blockchains are smaller blockchains that are set up with a limited number of verifiers such that together they control the transactions occurring on the blockchain in a centralized manner. Many organizations in the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance are working on private blockchains, which could be useful for non-arms reach transactions and hosting secure files like smart contracts, but understand something important. A private Ethereum blockchain has nothing to do with the actual public Ethereum blockchain, besides it sharing the name. Transactions will not be posted to the public blockchain, and essentially the currency is not Ether being used to transact. You might as well call it something totally different. It does, however, apply the same distributed ledger technology and allow you to have a slightly wider distribution than a centralized server. However, if you hosted a smart contract on some organization or government's private blockchain, they essentially have the ability equivalent to more than 51% of the mining power of a public blockchain and could change the underlying rules regarding that chain and how it works and even the validity of the smart contracts on the chain and it truly isn't immutable as the Ethereum public blockchain is. Lastly, I wanna to touch in this video on the scalability of blockchains and how this affects smart contracts. A blockchain is really only as efficient as it is scalable. When the Ethereum blockchain was backed up from CryptoKitties producing too many transactions, it put the rest of the transactions in a world to a halt. So if currently we have implemented important smart contracts on the Ethereum chain and we need to make an interaction to the contract while the network is busy, it could essentially not be interoperable for hours or even days at a time. This poses a potential setback to the international business world. While Ethereum can only handle as much as 30 transactions per second right now, they are working on a few protocols to scale that up to about a thousand transactions per second or even millions. If another blockchain supporting smart contracts comes up with a scalability solution and it works well for smart contracts, they may be become the next primary platform for implementing smart contracts. Well, I think that is enough for smart contracts in this lesson. In summary, blockchains make all the difference in where the smart contracts are hosted. Is it on a decentralized server or a centralized private server or a private blockchain? Is it on a scalable blockchain? And how do you see these smart contracts evolving as distributed ledger technology grows in the future? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. This smart contract lesson is brought to you by Event Chain Smart Tickets using smart contracts to solve the ticketing industry problems like excessive ticketing fees and counterfeit tickets. Check out our project at eventchain.io. I'm Ashton Addison and thank you for watching. Remember to like this video, share it and subscribe to the Crypto Coin Show to see my next video when I decrypt the facts to keep you on track in the crypto world.